Alright, so here we are with chapter 2, section 6, day 1, graphing and analyzing rational functions. So, if you remember back to chapter 5 in Algebra 2, here we go. Alright, so the first thing <clears throat> we want to remember is when you are graphing rational functions, notice it says ratio, that's because we're looking at fractions. Okay, so ratios or fractions. Um, whatever it is that you would like to call them. So here's our parent function over on the left, and so it's anything that has this 1 over x I, um, kind of base. And then over here we have what happens when you transform. So if you transform, we've got an a value here uh, that talks about if something is going to be vertically um, compressed or stretched. So just kind of uh, some notes here. a is your vertical. compression or stretch depending on if it is a number between 0 and 1 that would be your compression or if it is a number um, greater than 1 and so that would be your stretch. Uh, we also have the k value and so the k value is going to move or shift this initial 0, 0 point um, in this case up or down and it would be down. Okay. So k is going to be um, moving up or down And then the last one there uh, is H, which is going to talk about moving something left or right. And remember that uh, this is the one that's going to be in um, the opposite of what you think. Um, another piece of this is that the vertex, um, or in this case the center, is going to be at H comma K. So just a few pieces about that parent function and how it's transformed. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take what we know to be a rational function and we're going to turn it into this transformation form so that we can easily identify all of these pieces here. So again, there is no a value up on top because we don't actually have one um, because it's written in rational form versus in this transformation form. So. What we're going to do, as the uh, problem describes, is that we're going to need to use long division to identify the transformations, which means that I'm actually going to, um, and I'll do it on a separate sheet. Um, oh, actually, I can do um, factoring by synthetic division. So uh, the idea is, is that we're going to be taking 4 minus 3x, which would be the top or the numerator, and divide it by x minus 5. But of course, if we're doing this, we can use synthetic division since this is a linear um, function. And so in that case, we could say that 5 is actually our k value out here because it's the opposite. And then uh, this actually needs to be switched because you need your um, standard form. So negative 3x plus 4. But of course, synthetic division really only looks at negative 3 and then the number 4. All right. So if we go ahead and do our synthetic division, the first thing you do is bring down the first number, multiply that first number by the k value, in this case 5, and get negative 15. Then we add our two values together and we end up with negative 11. So that means that our answer is actually the fact that these two things divided equals negative 3 plus a remainder of negative 11 over the initial divisor of x minus 5. If we look at it and how it tries to look like this transformation form, if I take this negative 3 and put it behind, I now have negative 11 x minus 5 minus 3. And so I have an a value of negative 11, a h value of, let's see, 5, which means that it's uh, going to be moving uh, right 5. And then we also have, let's see, the green k value, which is uh, outside, so negative 3. So lots of things happening here. This a value um, ends up reflecting the idea, because it's negative, across the x-axis and stretching it vertically by a factor of 11. 
So, I don't know where I want to write that. We'll do it here. So again, the A of negative 11 means that we are going to uh, reflect across the x-axis. And then also the second piece is a stretch vertically and technically by a factor of 11. So a lot, very stretched. All right, uh, the next piece is that we have a h of 5. So our h value of 5 means that we're going to have the initial equation shifted uh, right 5. And then the last piece of a k of negative 3 means that we are going to have this uh, shifted down 3 units. So taking a look at our initial parent function, the parent function would potentially have the equations in these little parabola asymptote kind of things up here. But as you can see, instead of being in the top right, we're flipping it over the x-axis because of that negative. And so now, instead of up here across the x-axis, it's down here. And the same thing happens for this one. Instead of down on the left, it's up in the top right. The other thing that's happened is that it's stretched by 11. You can't really visually see that here necessarily, but especially if you had them together, you would kind of see that it's stretched out. And then this last piece here of h of 5 and k of negative 3 kind of means that that center is now 5, negative 3, instead of 0, 0. So if we go over 5 and down negative 3, we realize that our center is in here versus up here at the original origin. So that's the idea, and you'll be asked a few of those on the homework assignment. And so if you get a traditional rational function, in standard form, go ahead and do long division or synthetic division um, in order to identify this transformation notation, which will then easily tell you your a, k, and h. All right, uh, let's say that we are in that rational um, function view. This is where uh, you would find the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so again, this initial rational function which we had here. Okay. Uh, if we want to find our x-intercepts or our zeros, um, we would take the top of the fraction and set it equal to zero. So again, in this one here, uh, the numerator or the top set equal to zero is your x-intercepts and the bottom or the denominator set equal to zero is going to get you your vertical asymptotes. Uh, we also have n behavior asymptotes, and so we are going to end up uh, using this whole limit notation. So as x goes to wherever it is going to go, that's your n behavior. And so this is where we were just talking about. You're going to use polynomial long division or synthetic if you can. And once you find that, you'll be able to find uh, the constant value of the quotient as the asymptote. So again, the constant value, so in this last one, was negative 3. And then it says ignore any remainder, so we don't need to think about that negative 11. And that would end up being your horizontal asymptote. So in our previous example, the horizontal asymptote... Again, horizon is y equals, uh, would have been negative 3. All right, uh, and then the last one to find the y-intercept, as always, you just plug in 0. So these are pieces that you will need to identify um, on your functions in your assignment. So for uh, of course, we're going to do an example of this. So notice that it's kind of given in this uh, traditional format. And so, or uh, I guess for lack of a better word, standard format. So in order to find, for instance, the vertical asymptotes, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. So looking over here, we set the denominator equal to zero. And of course, the easier way to solve this, other than using the um, quadratic formula, I suppose, 
would be to factor. So what I'm looking for is what multiplies to be negative 6, but then at the same time adds to be negative 1. So two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 are going to be negative 3 and 2, or 2 and negative 2 and 3. And of course we want a negative 1, so we want the larger number to be negative, which means that I can actually rewrite this official equation initially as an x minus 1 on top, and then the factor is x minus 3 and x plus 2. So that'll help because if we set the denominator equal to 0 to get our vertical asymptotes, that means that 3, an x of 3, is going to be a vertical asymptote, and an x of negative 2, because those are the two values that would make each of those pieces a 0. All right. Uh, you can also see in this image here that we do actually have this uh, visually graphed. So x equals 3 is going to be this one right here, and so we did just discover that one. And then x equals negative 2 is this vertical asymptote. So the problem is, is that now we're doing n behavior asymptotes, which is actually supposed to take the place of horizontal asymptotes. The problem, of course, is that there aren't any horizontal asymptotes um, because, yes, they do approach this zero, but notice that, for instance, this point exactly right here actually is at zero. And so we can't say there's necessarily an asymptote, but we can say that there's these approaching ideas. Okay? So, because they're approaching certain uh, values, instead of saying that this um, is going to be a y equals zero as your end behavior asymptote, we're actually going to talk about what happens when you approach y equals zero from the left and the right at these asymptotes. So we've kind of already identified it in the picture, but remember to find the end behavior asymptote you would want to do that long division to get there. So n behavior asymptote says that we would end up taking, uh, I'm going to do long division just to kind of give us some practice. You would take x minus 1, and so um, I realize now that um, the long division uh, can only happen, or synthetic division uh, happens if you have um, the same power. Uh, we also have this idea that it's always y equals zero if the uh, denominator um, power is greater than the numerator. Um, so, your end behavior asymptote there uh, has to do with either using division because they have the same power, and then you can use this idea up here. Okay, so again, this is for same power on denominator and numerator, uh, but it's always y equals zero if the denominator is a greater power than the uh, numerator. All right, so. On that note, we are then going to break it down into these pieces of your uh, limit notation. So, looking at our end behavior, um, asymptote behavior, the idea is, is that as x, the limit as x approaches infinity, and then also the limit as x approaches negative infinity, those are your end behaviors so of this function. For the first one, as x approaches infinity, this is where um, we can use the previous slide because it's going to approach 0. So again, as it goes to infinity, x is going to infinity, we approach positive infinity. I'm oh, sorry, we approach 0. You notice that it's going towards 0. Uh, the next one, as our x's go to negative infinity, what are we approaching as our y, because remember f of x is y, becomes 0. The vertical asymptotes are a little bit um, different, okay, because the idea is, is that we have to talk about stopping at the number negative 2, 
and talk about it from the left, but then also from the right, because they do different things coming from the right and the left. So, what we get to do is talk about the limit as x approaches, for instance, negative 2 from the left. So negative 2, and then this tiny little negative that I'm going to put right here means from the left. So again, this is the um, limit as it approaches negative 2 from the left. All right, and so of our function that we have means that it's going to, as it approaches, negative 2 from the left is going to go down to negative infinity. All right, so the other one that kind of mirrors this is going to be the limit as x approaches negative 2, but now from the right, which is going to be a positive sign, little tiny exponent that's a positive. I'll fix that so it looks nice-ish. All right, and so taking a gander at what we have here, as we're approaching uh, negative 2 from the right, it's going to positive infinity. Okay, So we would say infinity. And again, this is approaches negative 2 from the right. Uh, so we can do that for the other one as well. So we have the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, and we'll also talk about the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. And so as it approaches 3 from the left, it's going to negative infinity. And as it approaches 3 from the right, it's going to positive infinity. So we've basically just taken everything from the previous slide that we said. Here are our vertical asymptotes. Here's our horizontal asymptote, if you will. But because the horizontal asymptote isn't actually an asymptote, since it intersects um, actually multiple times, we end up using um, end behavior. So our traditional end behavior, as we had before, but then now our new end behavior based on approaching the vertical asymptotes from the left and the right. So we will have an assignment that goes over each of these pieces, so hopefully you will be able to assess that. And of course you can watch the uh, video of the assignment as well as I go through it to kind of get some pieces of how to work it through.